And you can check out Around the World in 60 seconds on our website any day of the week. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Woodall. Let's get you into your weather story. Some of the developing stories that we're tracking on this Monday. BC, you're going to meet Anna. Who is she? When does she arrive? When does she go home? We'll let you know. Areas seeing fall snow and frost. Yes, it is that time of year in the national Halloween forecast, too. We'll touch on that. All right. I'm Jacqueline Woodall. Let's take a look at the storm. But really, it's just a saturated cloud with some heavy rainfall, uh, probably offshore at that time, moving closer to onshore. What you don't see in that video are these strong wind gusts, too. So we have wind sustained out of the southeast offshore at 60 kilometers per hour sustained so imagine gusts beyond that at easily 80 to 90. this is tropical storm anna which was a category one hurricane through hawaii then weakened to a tropical storm then strengthened again and then weekend and the story goes on for anna she doesn't know which way she was going uh and then it's finally getting closer to the bc coast but it's the remnants or what was anna so we have wind warnings in place for those gusts that i was just talking about then there's the rainfall 60 to 100 millimeters of rain and as we get further inland, it's all about the snow. Let's show you. It's a nighttime shot. But this mixed precipitation along with some snow, wet snow, still through Saskatchewan today. This is all courtesy of an area of low pressure that's tracking through the prairies. Uh, and with that, we'll ultimately move into northwestern Ontario with some snow as well. 15 to 30, though, in the higher elevations of B.C. It's going to be nice for skiers. But what is this? Yes, by the time the system gets to Ontario, rain time for the Halloween trick-or-treat forecast, we could see some snow through northwestern Ontario, some mix through southern Ontario, and straight rain through the east. We'll keep you posted on that. Wind warnings for the East Coast, and then a real quick snapshot for you right across the country for Halloween. Make sure to tell the kids to bundle up. All right, thanks to Natalie Thomas for that top five. It's nice to have you along on this Monday for a look at your national forecast. I'm Jacqueline Whittle. Official high temperatures for Sunday. Let's take a look. Rosetown, Saskatchewan, 18 degrees, very mild temperatures. Winnipeg at 14. Toronto didn't do too badly. They're at 12.9. And same for Halifax, some of the cooler spots. Fort Laird, Calgary, only at about 6 degrees. All right, so where do our temperatures go from here? Well, this evening, look at this, only about 0 in Edmonton. Of course, we've had some snow, uh, 1 in Regina. And then the East Coast, it's going to be about 8 degrees with some showers. Let's take you now to Ontario this evening, about 10 degrees. London looking at 15. Get ready for a warm-up, though. We do have a warm sector or area of low pressure that will keep us warm uh, by the time we're into tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. But with the latest for today, here's Mike Arsenault. Thanks, Mike. And yeah, while you'll be basking in the warm temperatures, maybe not sunshine tomorrow, we will be getting ready for a big cool down by the time the kids are out trick-or-treating. Yeah, Barry could see some mixed precip when the, the ghouls and goblins are out and Sudbury looking at maybe straight snow. We'll keep you posted on that. As Mike Arsenault just mentioned, non-severe thunderstorm potential for southwestern Ontario today into the prairies this evening. It's going to be a chilly one. Still looking at snow through Saskatchewan. So Saskatoon, Larange, just around that zero degree mark or below. Red Deer, cool but the precipitation will be moving out. Where there's lots of precipitation will be uh, on the West Coast. We'll talk a little bit more about this storm and still... Gotta love it. Oh, they did a great job covering that event, and uh, that's a funny top five video. Thanks, guys. All right, BC will introduce you to Anna today. That's one of our top stories, and some of the areas across the country seeing some snow already, and, of course, your national Halloween forecast, a dark heavy saturated cloud with lots of rainfall and lots of wind it's the remnants of what was a hurricane a category one storm through hawaii and now is just a post-tropical storm but wind gusts still quite impressive southeasterly flow 60 and above sustained winds offshore we could be getting gusts anywhere from about 80 to 90 as this uh, storm gets closer we'll see our wind shift slightly to the southwest there's the wind warning for bella bella all the way down through the central coast and this is how much rainfall we're expecting. So quite a bit, 60 to 100 millimeters of rain in that red shaded area. And that means you for Tofino and then up through the rest of the island on the west side of the island anyway. And then colder air with lots of precips means only one thing. It's snow. And we see Buffalo Narrows, La Rage, all the way to Saskatoon today and Regina. But those areas will see more of a mix with rain. And that's an area of low pressure that's moving through that will not only cool things off, but yeah, keep that white stuff around. A little too early for my liking. Speaking of the white stuff, 15 to 30 millimeters of snow, fresh snow for some of the higher elevations. That's going to be making skiers happy. Let's take you now, though, to an, a hard frost. It has been chilly the last few mornings, but look at that. That's definitely a hard frost. This is definitely the potential for uh, some lake effect snow, maybe mixed precipitation for our trick-or-treaters. We'll keep a close eye on the Halloween forecast, plus a look at your local forecast coming up. 
Thanks for joining us on this Monday. You can catch all of our features like Around the World in 60 Seconds on our website any day of the week. All right, let's get into your forecast to, to start our work week. Current systems map, we have a big one right through the prairies here. That's bringing some snow and some mixed precipitation over the next 24 hours. This warm sector, so between this warm front and this cold front, that's all going to move through Ontario next along the jet stream. It's going to warm up Ontario nicely. And then on the east coast, still dealing with this kind of pesky system. In the west coast, it's a whole big story out there for you, and uh, that means means heavy rainfall and strong wind gusts as well. So uh, let's get you into the story here with our cloud tops. This shows the coldest clouds in our atmosphere, which indicates our tallest clouds in the atmosphere, and that means where our active weather is. So we're watching some here in uh, northwestern Ontario, and you can see that counterclockwise spin to a lot of these uh, lows as well. Bella Bella all the way down to Campbell River, you could see wind gusts anywhere from about 80 to 90 kilometers per hour with the remnants of a tropical system. And the name of that tropical system was Anna when it it was a Category 1 storm that moved through um, Hawaii and then weakened to a tropical storm, strengthened again, weakened again, and then took a turn up through the northwest uh, Pacific. So with that uh, pink color, that's indicating winds offshore, 60 kilometers an hour sustained. So those gusts even beyond that. Now, non-severe thunderstorms for Ontario with some of that instability moving through. So we'll keep a close eye on the radar for you there. Yes, it is share your weather time. I love this time of day. Every day I send out a tweet and I ask a question. It could be anything. And then you give me an answer. It could be, I don't know, what are you being for Halloween this year? And then you send that answer to me at jwitltwn on Twitter. And then at 44 minutes past the hour from Monday to Friday, if I select your tweet, if you share your weather with me, then I give you a personalized forecast right in your own backyard. So that's how we play the game. But I want to change up today's uh, being that all eyes will be on Hamilton, Ontario tomorrow. Of course, we have the funeral going on for the soldier that lost his life um, at Parliament Hill. So we have a forecast, which, of course, we are always talking about the weather every day. But we want to make sure that you are well informed if you maybe are attending that funeral. Uh, tomorrow morning, it'll be 14 degrees, partly cloudy, afternoon high of 20 degrees. Make sure you pack an umbrella. There will be showers. We'll continue to talk about Anne on the West Coast. Stay with us. <laughs> you would, yes, as a storm hunter. Mark Robinson joining myself. I'm meteorologist Jack Little to talk a little bit about Hurricane Anna's past and future. Yep. Uh, a storm that developed near Hawaii. Yeah, this is a storm that developed down here, went through the Hawaii area as a Cat 1, and then be, made this turn back up towards the coast. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of unusual for this kind of uh, this kind of storm. Normally they're off and gone uh, sort of towards the uh, the west, but right. this time it's come back around and started heading east, right back towards the coast, and that in itself makes this a very unusual storm. And you know, we talked a little bit about water temperatures in the Atlantic when we were tracking uh, Hurricane Gonzalo. Yeah. Same deal on the west coast. This is a very cold ocean current, so that's why you don't see a lot of storms in the Baja. Exactly. As it's coming towards that area, it's, it's getting into that current there, a very cold current coming down from the north, and that means that the storm loses a lot of its energy, doesn't have that uh, hot water to keep it going. So they tend not to make it to landfall, and this one just might. And as a tropical storm that once was, and now is the remnant low, when we talk about a remnant, that means a lot of the energy still, a lot of the rainfall, and that's what we're going to get. Yeah, the, again, the tropical characteristics are gone, but it's still got that rainfall and some of the winds left. All right, heavy rainfall. You can see up to 100 millimeters of rain, plus winds as strong as 80 or 90 kilometers per hour. If you've ever seen a hurricane in the tropics near the equator, they usually look like this. But where does your eye go to? Right to the center of the storm. Did you know that we have hurricanes as far north as Canada? We certainly do. This is Hurricane Gonzalo in the fall of 2014. Now, most hurricanes, when they get closer to Canada, start to lose their tropical characteristics. They interact with colder water and usually don't have an eye feature. But Gonzalo still did. It actually stayed 50 kilometers away from the Avalon Peninsula. And Mark Robinson and I went chasing it actually got a glimpse of the potential eye. So well, how does an eye form? Well, on the outer edges of the eye, we have rising air from the ocean, and that's what we call convection. But in the center, the air is sinking, and sometimes you'll have a complete clearing area, even sunshine. We'll take a look at this. We were driving along the road, and we saw this that was just offshore. That is likely the eye of Gonzalo.